record on this computer. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Aligning with Success. I'm your host, Mike DiMuccio. It is March something, 7th. Wow. It's already March. I guess spring is just uh, around the corner. Um, you know, last week, I was reviewing the call last week, and uh, it was a great call. It was uh, a call that really shared, it tried to gain the, es the, the essence of Nikan. You know, the fact that we do have something very, very special and very unique in the world, because it is more than just simply a business. It is a calling. It, is, um, it, it, has, a, it has its own sense of spirit. There, there seems to be a sense of Nikan being something uh, intrinsic and separate and independent of any one of us. So, um, but at the same time, it's all of us. So it is a, a very, very unique thing to offer. We have a very unique offering. I just got off of a, a call. It's actually still going on with the Sovereign Life team. We had a, a guest um, speaker sharing her wisdom and answering questions from these newbies. Um, our guest was Veronica, or is Veronica Ampudia. And... Yeah. Um, it's pretty amazing, you know. I'm sitting here as a as a co-host, I guess, on that call, but just really setting up the call and listening to this this wonderful human being who I met about seven or eight years ago now. Um, when she re she told the story, uh, we were at a Nikan event. I think it was in Orlando, and um, some she's she's kind of tiny. Um, short and I feel this tug on my on my suit and I look over and it's Veronica and she's I don't know who she is and she's saying this is who she is and she wants to talk to me and she wants to get some personal coaching and I said well send me an email and so that that started this this journey where um, she was a I think she was a platinum I think she had achieved the rank of platinum but was sort of at a stalemate in her business. Her business wasn't progressing. And, and it wasn't progressing in a manner that was consistent with her expectations, her goals. She was having all kinds of challenges with respect to how things were done in, 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 um, in the local groups and how she wanted them done, being somebody who came from the corporate and professional world. So she was having a hard, it was like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. She was that person. And, and it's not the first time I've had these conversations. It's kind of interesting because, and I'm, I'm glad she came to me. I'm glad she found me because she said, had that not happened, she reiterated tonight, she had to quit. She, she had to, for sure she had to quit. But she did say, her stories are funny. We have to get her back. She said something like, because they're all new. They're all less than a year in Nikan. And, um, and she said, you know, one of the questions were, you know, like, did you ever, think about quitting she says well if there's 52 weeks in a year um i was i was quitting at least twice a week <laughs> she said if you're doing less than that that's good that's really good if you're doing about two times well that's that's good too if you're doing three times well that's just simply part of the process <laughs> but for sure i was quitting two times a week <laughs> in her first year so you know it's 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 amazing though, but I, I, I was watching her tonight and seeing how she, was re, how she was responding to these questions, which were very legitimate, very thoughtful questions about what, is it, what does it take? Like, what does it take to make it work? What does it take to, to deal with um, you know, people quitting? What does it take to, to grow your business? How do, you, how do you decide who to work with and so forth? Those are really good questions. And and as I, I'm listening to her talk and thinking back to when I first met her and was first involved with helping to coach her, the growth, the development, which she said, by the way, was the, the highlight. The, one of the questions was, what was the greatest benefit um, for her? What, she, what she's gained the most? And she said, it's, it's the personal development. And, well, for her, the most greatest experience so far has been watching members of her team go through that. When, when you see, and I'm like, I'm just sitting there thinking, I know <laughs> I'm watching it happen right now. <laughs> it's so amazing when you watch somebody on your team who is like, you don't, you don't have to finish their sentence. You don't have to add to what they're saying. 
they you can just sit back and relax and go, wow, that was a great answer. I should have re- I should have recorded this. <laughs> well, I did, but <laughs> it's just it's just a thrill when you have members of your team who are shining and in their own right. And I can tell you, um, she was mentioning one of the people on her team where this is a platinum who does everything further downline and and has a hard time saying no. But the pro- she says the problem is her business is stagnant. There's no growth. Why do you suppose? Because you've got to make room for the leaders to lead. But she did identify something that I thought was interesting and we'll come back to because the the conversation started before you guys joined about team building. And I think that's a great, great topic. She said that they've identified four categories of people. There are those who just simply want to use the products and they're happy to be doing that. There are those who want to sell the products and make some money selling the products, but they don't want to invite other people to the business. They're happy doing that. Then there are those who who do want to invite others to to the business, but they're not motivated to go maybe beyond silver. And then there are those who want to build an organization, build a business and and really develop an organization. And they've identified them as different. These are people who want to go gold and above, so to speak. And the reason why it's important to know who you're dealing with and when you invite them into the business to present that as an option. um, I think the reason why that's valid is because it's not one shoe fits all. And we can make a huge assumption if we think they join, therefore they want, you know, the, the big prize. That's a big assumption. And as I've been working with this new team, um, I find that a lot of them being, first of all, new to entrepreneurship, they're, they're, they're in the E quadrant. And I'm talking about the B quadrant lifestyle, but they haven't even figured out how to be an S quadrant. Because you can't, if you know the book uh, that we were asked to read recently, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I, I remember that was one of the first books I was ever uh, encouraged to read. And that, that author, one of the books that we recommended in our training system is from that author. That book was called First Things First, which is one of the ch- subchapters of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which I think, by the way, if you haven't read it, there you go. I think it's a book. Thanks, Leo. I think it's really a good book that uh, ought to be maybe um, required reading. You know, if, if you want, if somebody says to you that they really want to build a business and they want to build a big business, and, and they've never been a business owner, then they have not yet learned some of the fundamental psychological and emotional challenges that have to happen before they're even ready to step into those shoes. And, and I think it's a big mistake if we don't recognize that. We need to recognize that sometimes they need baby steps first, what they call private victories in this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People where you go from being dependent to being independent before you go to interdependent. You don't go from dependent to interdependent. And, and the relationship in Nikan is, and the reason why you see me doing this is because um, E quadrant, S quadrant, B quadrant. E quadrant dependent, S quadrant independent, B quadrant interdependent. So, don't assume somebody who's in the E quadrant is going to just because they join Nikan and just because you can train them is going to have a B quadrant psychology. They're not. Not until they have an S quadrant, meaning they've learned how to become self-employed. And here's what I mean by that. Um, one of the things I find, one of the great challenges when you got an E-quadrant person is they make a great employee, they make a terrible boss. And, and what I mean is, you know, if their boss says you got to come to work at eight, even though it may be inconvenient, even though they may have other plans, even though whatever, they don't like it, guess what? They go they go to work and they show up on time for eight o'clock if that's what they're told to do as an employee. They follow those instructions regardless of how emotional 
They are about it. They end up at work. Give that same person their own business and you say, hey, there's an appointment. You, got to, you need to book an appointment for eight o'clock and see what happens. How often that appointment gets post postponed or, oh, I slept in or, you know, I can't really do it. Do you have another time? Um, do you have another, did, did you, did you record it? Can I watch the recording? You start to hear all of this nonsense when somebody is put in the shoes of the S quadrant, when they're now being asked to be self-employed, all of a sudden they become a terrible boss, a worse employee. So I heard, I think it was uh, Richard Brooks said, we got to tell our people to start treating their business like a job. <laughs> Because they seem to be more effective as employees, you know, so let's make them employees of their own business and teach them how to be that. So the idea of being self-employed is a, is a gap um, that needs to be filled. And I think that's where the personal development curriculum, that's where some of the business training comes in. And so pointing them to some reading material could be really helpful so that you have some common language. They start to read for themselves what it is that they need to own up to. And I love something that Veronica said tonight. She said, Niken, the personal development is like, she says, Niken is like a mirror that they put up in front of you and you're standing in front of it naked and everything you like about yourself and everything you don't like about yourself, you just got to learn to love everything about yourself. Because how else are you going to manage? If, if you're going to be completely fearful and constantly second guessing yourself and doubting yourself and so forth, you just got to learn to, to love all every part of you. And, and that's when you really start to, to take off in your business. Anyway, coming back to the team building, and I want you guys to start chiming in um, who, who right now are building teams. Um, I think uh, I, I, Yoko, I think you said you're you're in the you're in the E quadrant. You're operating your Nikken end business in the E quadrant. That's what the retail model is. Yes. Um, so, the retail model is the E quadrant. The franchise model is the S quadrant, and the uh, network marketing model is the B quadrant. So we go from sales to sponsoring to team building. Those are the three concepts. The consciousness that has to shift. So um, sponsoring is, is just is the act of teaching people about the business and enrolling them, um, maybe giving them some guidance as to what it is that they need to do to be self-sufficient. But team building is different. Team building really is what um, is, is discussing the purpose of the team. It's creating an identity for this team. What is this team about? What is this team? What makes this team a team? Um, and now it's interesting that we're having this conversation and I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to throw it out to you guys. So when Sophia, Savannah and Elena approached me in the summer, the spring, late spring of 2021 last year to, to do Nikan, um, just in my office over there, the, the round table, we decided that the, well, they were gonna move in. So, well, I mean, one day they just showed up with suitcases. So I assumed they were moving in. So that's what they did. All three of them just start rolling in with suitcases. I'm like, you guys moving in? I'm like, yep, okay. <laughs> so that was that. Anyways, probably a good move on their part. Um, so I decide, okay, we, we don't start something until we know what it is that we're doing here. What, what are we doing here? Because if I don't have context, if they don't have context, what are we going to say to people? Like, how are you going to approach people until they get passionate? Oh, by the way, another, another golden, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? A gold nugget from Veronica. Uh, anxiety leaves when passion moves in. They cannot coexist. So if you're experiencing anxiety, replace it with passion. What are you passionate about, Nikan? Get more passionate about something because you won't feel the anxiety if you're passionate about what it is that you want to do or what you want to create. So, um, so we sat down at the table and I got my whiteboard out and we started with this conversation. 
I said, people join Nikan every single day. All it takes is 20 bucks and they're in. That says absolutely nothing about anyone. It's 20 bucks. It says they've got 20 bucks or they can put 20 bucks on their credit card. It tells us nothing. So joining Nikan is something most Nikan people do. They invite people to join Nikan. I said, that's really falling short of the mark because that doesn't actually enroll them in anything other than a subscription to buy wholesale. So what are we going to enroll these people in? Because depending on what it is we want to enroll them in, this is going to determine the information we have to present to them. You can't be enrolled in something and not know what it is you're being enrolled in. You have to be informed to be deciding if you want to be enrolled in it. So the first thing we have to do is decide, what are we enrolling these people in? I said, most people, they talk about the products, they talk about the opportunity, and they enroll people in Niken. In Niken. They don't even enroll them in a business plan. They just enroll them in Niken, which is, what does that take? 20 bucks. Means nothing. Everybody's got that. So they're not really enrolling them in anything. I said, because they don't talk about a plan. They don't have a plan. They're not enrolling them in their plan, let alone that other person's plan. They're just enrolling them in Nikan. It's like the finish line. Hey, I got them in. And then they all get all excited because they just sponsored somebody, which means absolutely nothing. I can look at every one of your genealogy and prove to you just by looking at your genealogy that what I'm saying is the truth, right? Big fat zeros down your genealogy with people you've enrolled. Because you enrolled them in Niken, you didn't enroll them in anything other than to get registered. So what am I saying? There had to be a reason why people were going to enroll, not just in Niken, but in this team. So I said, you got to be able to present why Niken, why now, which means for that individual, why is it urgent for them to get involved now? And the last one, why with you? I said, the why with you part, I can tell you 99.999% of Nikon consultants never discuss. This is high level information. This is multimillionaire information in network marketing. Why Nikon? Why now? Everybody talks about that. The why now? Maybe even not. Why Nikon? Yes. Why now? Maybe. But why with you? Never. So if you want to enroll people in a movement, if you want to enroll people in a team, create a team, a, a vision and experience of a team, you have to first imagine it in your mind that such a thing exists. And then you have to express it out there so that you can attract those things that are attracted to it. Why Niken? I think we can make a pretty strong case for that right now, right? Why now? make it even stronger case for why now in terms of the economy and the world at large and the timing of things. But the, the why now is really more about why that person's now. That's why you have to get into their why. But why with you? Have you answered that question? That's something you want to give some thought to, because if you want to build a team, that question must be on the table. Why with you? What, are, what is your value to the equation that they would want to be part of this team of yours that you're creating? So have an answer to that question, which means you might want to give some thought to what it means. If somebody said, okay, Maggie, why would I join your business and not Lynn's business? Since both of you are in Nikan and I can join Nikan with 20 bucks and I can do it now because I want to, why should I join you and not Lynn or Paul? or Leo, you have to have an answer to that question. Because if you have an answer to that question, now you have a reason. Now you have a purpose. Now this team has an, an identity. And now you can start bringing on those members of, that resonate with that identity. And I can assure you, if Maggie puts in pen to paper and starts writing why they should be part of her team. It's going to be different than why Lynn and, and, or why Leo. 
you're going to have your own unique way of representing why being a part of your team matters. Because what you're going to bring into that is your vision, your vision for the team and your unique ability to help with that team become a reality. That creates in the law of attraction, an attractive field. And it's called the attractor field, or basically you're starting to formulate in the, in the ethers, the very frequency upon which progress. you will attract the, the people that are attracted to that frequency. Having a vision for a team. Does, does your team have a name? That was another Shoot. thing I said. Well, if this team is going to have a vision, it's, if it's going to be something, what's this team called? I asked them, what's the team called? And they came up with Sovereign Life. So the team's called Sovereign Life Team. Nice name. Certainly represents what they're trying to create within the individual. A sovereign life. So when you hear them speak, when they do their calls, they do their why me can, why now? But they always finish why this team. Why is it important to be part of this team? What's this team doing that, that you would want to be a part of regardless? So if you want to have a team, the first place you need to build the team is in your mind. You need to see it in your mind. You need to give that team an identity. You need to give that vision an expression. You, you need to put in words the best you can. What is this team represent? Why does this team exist? Why would somebody want to be part of this team? Now, I can tell you in Latin America, each of the team leaders have their own name. They, they have their own group names. Jiku is one. Uh, Gloria Navas' team is Koi. Um, Veronica is Oreca. All of those leaders started to give identity and logos. They even created logos to their team identities. Now, that doesn't prohibit somebody in their downline to create their own identity. In fact, they encourage it. When a leader wants to take on the role of building a team, they start to create an identity for the team. So something I think worth doing. I mean, one of the things that I did from the very beginning or way back in the day is I created a thing called the Royal Alliance. That was in place of an organization called Team Diamond but I was always giving the name. I was always giving a name to what it is that I'm trying to create. Some of you are on my chat called Team Canada. There's always a name. It's an identity. You're giving birth to an identity by naming it. And so if you want to have a group, if you want to attract a group, start imagining it in your mind, give it an identity, give it a name, define why it would be, why would you join this team? Why would somebody join this team? And if you want to really challenge yourself, say, why would they join your team and not mine, as in Mike DiMuccio? Because you probably have a lot of good things to say about why somebody might join my team. But if you can rise to the challenge of saying why they should join your team over mine, then you're going to start giving some real beautiful definitions to what makes your team unique and special. You know, maybe it's because it's younger. You know, Mike's been at this 30 years. He's old. He's got, you know, he's at the top. He doesn't need to go any further. He's not in, he's not hungry. This team is a team that's hungry. This team is a team that's on its toes, not on its ass. This team means business. You can you make it up. I don't care, but do it. Give your team, birth your team in your mind. Because that's where it always starts. And then it will grow from there. So some of you have had some practice at this or getting pretty good at it. If you want to share your experience of what I'm talking about or just what, what this means to you. Anybody? Paul, I see you unmuted. Go ahead. Sure. Well, um, my team has a name. It started a long time ago. I Bruce Black just said, uh, you know, Gabios Wellness Center, but uh, about a year and a half ago, I changed it to Gabios Wellness Network 
So it's not a center that people go to, it's a, it's a network. And um, the, the reason people join me uh, is because they, they know me, they, they know what, what uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm all about the five pillars of, of health and usually it's body and finances that where the, the, the key is, uh, the, the, the need is. But, but I think fundamentally uh, it's the social relationships that bring people together that are uh, important. So when I introduce people to uh, other people in my upline, they, they still have their relationship with me first and then their people have their relationship with their people. And um, yeah, we all uh, like the same thing in, in, in Nikan, but uh, I think teams have a social gel that's super important. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Agreed. Well, I just want to help you a little bit with that because you said society or the financial pillar and the body pillar, that's why they would join Nikan. That would be the reason for doing, you know, you have to answer why Nikan, why now? Yeah. The, the why now is essentially why them. The why now also is the timing. It's, it's presenting Nikan in a way that shows that its timing is, is, is ideal. You know, when I talk about the timing of Nikan, I speak about the fact that Nikan, um, has a new CEO, that it has a vision for 2025, that it's laying a foundation internally through its technology and its team to lay that foundation for a, a, a accelerated growth curve. It's taking its lead from what we experienced as a microcosm in Latin America, where they were able to attract transition from an older audience to a younger audience that has not yet happened in North America or Europe, but that is what is on the table. So and, and I say, you know, while the baby boom market may have heard of Nikan, maybe we've only got about 2% market penetration, if that. Gen Y, Gen X, Gen Z, nobody's ever heard of Nikan. So it's like starting all over again, but with a company with 47 year track record. So how I present the timing of Nikan, and then of course, with everything that's happened in the last two years, finances and health, health being now on everybody's mind, Another reason why timing, I speak to the timing, but the timing where the individual is concerned is, where are you at in life? Are you done or you got somewhere to go? How, how bad do you want to get there? How far do you want to go? That's about the individual and their sense of timing, their sense of urgency. So assuming you did your job and you presented a strong case for why Nikan now, and a strong case came up through your extracting information from them as to why they have a sense of urgency, why there might be some urgency in their life concerning this solution. Then there's that last piece. Why you? Why be a part of your team? And I don't mean your team in terms of Niken, in terms of my organization. I really mean in terms of you and what you're putting out there. And I'll tell you why, why I say that. Because the second you give meaning to those words, you take on a new role. Um, it's easy for me to say, well, once they're in, they're in and, you know, they got all the Nikan meetings and they got all the Nikan this and they got all the Nikan. I don't have to do anything. They got all the Nikan stuff to do. That's you saying, my job is done. I got them in Nikan. My job is done. That's not a team builder. That's not a community builder that's just a recruiter and i don't know about you but have you noticed on the scoreboard of success in niken it's not the recruiters who make the money it's the community builders the team builders are the ones who are making the big paychecks so if you want to make a big paycheck i guess you need to start on that journey sooner than later so i'm giving you a really big hint start seeing it in your mind Start seeing yourself as a leader, as somebody who actually has value to give to a community, to a team, that, that you have a voice and that you have experience and that you can pull all that together and create value for somebody who joins your team. 
do that and you will give yourself a raise because you will have just identified why you have a unique purpose in this experience of Nikan. That's worth something in the way of monetary remuneration that will come to you through the law of attraction. So just by giving yourself, identifying a, a higher role in this is giving yourself a raise in the ethereal plane, which by the law must manifest into form. Yoko, you have your hand up. Well, the reason I did say team building because I have built teams in corporate America. However, it's a whole big, like you're just saying, this whole platform is something that I have done and redone and grown and regrown and gone backwards and forwards and sideways. So you, whatever you're saying all resonates much clearer to me, though I've heard you say this, this kind of stuff, you know, uh, except I would say in, in a much more um, uh, holistic way in that the timing, and I've experienced everything you've said at different times in the past 15 years. But the key to me, because my success was based on retail as we started off, is that I had no true record or uh, um, I, I am not a, a proven leader in leadership in the network marketing platform. And so now that I have more, what I consider not so much anxiety or frustration in that particular arena, I am definitely seeing only in a period of a couple months, much more success than I have in 15 years and even speaking to people. So it's interesting. And timing is really been one key factor in my, in my market of I, what I consider is our business prospects because they, they are people I've, I've known in business. So thank you, thank you, yes. Great, awesome. Anyone else wanna sh chime in? Leo, I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer you. You uh you you've got you've got a case for building a team. You've got a strong team um, that's emerging and and certainly lighting a fire for North America. So, um, how does what I'm saying? I mean, you obviously have a vision. Um, that's why it's happening. You you made a decision that you were going to become a. a a Royal Diamond, Diamond this year and Royal Diamond next year. I forget what the, the dates were, this year and next year. Now, what's what's going on? <laughs> there you go, you got that diamond up. So you have a team um, and it's a good strong team that's emerging and each of them have strong capable uh, leadership within themselves. I already see that's starting to show. Um, how does what I'm talking about relate to you? Okay. Whoops. You understand? Yep. Okay, because my internet is have a little bit problem. A few minutes. Can you repeat the question? Question, please. Yeah. The, the question is, you 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 sh you have a team. You have a team that's growing, emerging, a good, strong team, and this and this team has a very strong sense of team. Uh, when when your when your leaders are on. Niken's calls, they're always acknowledging you. They're always recognizing and acknowledging you. So what has been, what has been one or two key things that have made this team feel like a team, come together as a team? Okay, uh, first of all, I take a decision. <laughs> first. This decision is began by me. I take a decision to uh, uh, more more activity in my group, and I create a system. And uh, each each days each uh, I have a, a system with my email. I begin with my email system. It's work and very work. I do a lot of contact with that. It's now it's easy to do a contact for me. It's easy. Okay. And I create a system Zoom with, uh, with my group. And uh, tonight at seven, I have motivation group uh, Zoom Zoom motivation at seven o'clock. And eight o'clock, I have uh, my uh, testimonial it, uh, be, every, every Monday night. It's work because I register recorded recorded, and I have I've raised sixty or hundred view each week with that. Fantastic. 
yeah <laughs> the same thing like i do a meeting with 100 people but uh we around 20 people each monday but i recorded and sent to my group and i made it i've read a three two or three contacts every day for myself i'm i'm only constantly uh every day so okay. i'll tell you what i'm hearing if i was going to say what's the one or two key things one or two key things one for sure was you made a decision and there's no question your decision was a real committed decision. I heard, I was listening to Bob Proctor this morning and, and they were talking about the training that he is do doing. They were, they were showcasing his work and then they were talking about it. For those of you who are on these, on the one week long free session with, with this team, Proctor Gallagher. And they said, irrevocable committed decision. The word irrevocable, when they would talk about because I've been having a struggle with people understanding what a decision is. People say they made a decision and then you see them changing their minds all the time, which means they never really made a decision. But when you use that word, irrevocable committed decision, now you know what that means. So you're, you've, you've done that. There's, there's no question in my mind, you've made an irrevocable committed decision and it's demonstrating itself through your commitment. Then that's number one. Two, a system. I want to just take a second, if I can, steal a moment of your of your time here. You can all see this. So, what we have is the cash flow quadrants, and what we've been talking about is how to get from the left side, the employee mindset, which is sales, or the self-employed mindset, uh, which is like the franchise mindset over to the business owner mindset. How do we do that? What's the, what's the first line? You own, own a system. system. You own a system. So one of the things that, ha you know, there's a, there's owning a job or, or having a job, owning a job and owning a system. Those are the three transitions. So, what you by by creating a system that you adhere to and teach you repositioned yourself into the b quadrant because now it's not about you now it's about the system for yeah. the person in the s quadrant guess who is it, it's about yeah. this platinum that veronica is referring to who says oh i can't say no they don't say no because they don't want to say no they want the attention. For them, having a following is what gives them a sense of self-worth and power. So their ego is all, you know, uh, built up on the need to be uh, needed. That's the S quadrant concept. That's the S quadrant mentality. That's the boss who needs employees to be the boss. And the, the B quadrant, the business builder quadrant is I don't care to be the smartest person. I don't want to be the smartest person. I want to be surrounded by people who are smarter than me, who can take the system and run with it. That requires somebody who's not feeling the need to be important. They just feel the need to grow. They're, they're tied to the outcome. They're not tied. They're, they're not tied to their ego. So that's a, that's a movement into the B quadrant. And I'll give another an illustration of an S quadrant or the E to the S quadrant situation, the emotion. Oh, I'm afraid to call somebody. You're afraid, why? They're gonna kill you? They're gonna hunt you down and kill you? Like, what? why would you be afraid? Well, what if they say no? Oh, I see. So this is not about them, this is about you. That's another symptom of the E quadrant struggling to be in the S quadrant where it's all about them. It's all about how they feel and the fear that they have and all that. And they don't realize that this is making this all about you and not about the job, which is to serve. So as long as you're focused on you and your, your outcome is measured by whether they go the direction you want them to go, then your self-worth is tied to other people. It's not tied to you and something strong within you. It's tied to the circumstances outside of you. It's a very weak and vulnerable 
vulnerable position, which is why it's the big gap. The biggest gap is from, from E to S. It's not from S to B. So, so there you go. If, you're, if, you, if you recognize those symptoms, you'll know where they're stuck. So how do you get them unstuck? How do you, how do you move them past that? You got to get to the real question, which is what's more important to you? What's more important to you? Having a result that works for your business or being right? What's more important to you? You know, having a result that grows your business or feeling secure that you made the right decision to have this business? You know, there's a lot of people who look for the external validation every day. You know, as Veronica said, I was quitting two times a week. So helping people move past those emotional blocks are going to be the key to building an organization. So sorry, I interrupted Leah. Did you have something else that you wanted to add? Uh, you know what? Uh, always I uh, wait for somebody in my group push me, <laughs> okay? And that's happened with my group on this moment because uh, Many years ago, I'm, low, I'm too low profile, you know, I do my business, low, you know what I mean? But now, that's what I said to my coaching Zoom tonight. I said, it's my first year I have a pressure to go to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, I won four times my trip. I won four times for uh, Italy, New York, Hawaii, and, and uh, Dubai. But I'm only just me. But this year, I promote my group Japan. Go Japan every day. I go Japan. Go go Japan. Go. And I have many people want to come with me. I don't have a choice to win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a choice. I, have to, I don't give you a right to airport. You say bye, and I say much out. No way. I don't try. I have a pressure this year to win. No choice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great perspective. Love it. Love it. It's Put okay. your butt in the crack is what Marty would say. So you're now <laughs> you're now you're stuck. <laughs> That's great. It's Mike, good. Mike it's Leo, good. I, I I feel the same way. I was talking to some people, prospective team people. Then after the call, I said, God, I I I gotta make it to to Team Kaizen at least to go to Japan because I'm talking about it. It's it's a, it, it's pressure. You're right, Leo. And good pressure. It's good pressure. Yeah. Well, there you go. So uh, some really good. Anybody else, by the way? Meg, I see you're unmuted. Yeah, I was going to I want to talk about a couple of things. Michael, as you're talking about that S to E to B, looking back. E to over, S to B. Yeah, E to S to B. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not the BS, the SB. Um, <laughs> I look at my journey in Nikan, and I can certainly identify with what you're saying about at first it was all about me. I was afraid and, you know, what are people going to think of me because, you know, I'm doing this thing that people don't understand and I'm supposed to be this you know, erudite professor, etc. And then I got into the whole thing about I got to do everything, you know, I, and, and that was the biggest downfall. And I think Leo and I suffered from that same malaise because that really disempowered everybody, including myself. So now I realize that it's the personal development and it's all those years of reading and going to seminars and humans being more over 20 times and really wanting to be the best I could be so that I could then transform myself into a better leader. So it's, it's an amazing journey and it doesn't happen overnight for me anyway, it doesn't happen overnight. True, true. No, but I mean, think about it with respect to a career option to be able to go from the E quadrant to the B quadrant inside a decade mm -hmm. or, or, or even shorter is quite an extraordinary achievement by any means. Most people, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, you know, if you look at businesses, it's 20, 30 year windows for most businesses to achieve self-sustainability before they're in a position to maybe be sold or something. So if you can take a person who's fresh out of college or, or maybe didn't even graduate and, and give them a track to run on 
with some guide rails, right? Some, some, you know, like in bowling, they have those, if you're a real novice in bowling, you can ask for the guide rails, they come up and they keep the ball from going in the gutter. Cause you, oh, know, you can you still get the ball into the next alley. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so to have people, to give people a, a business where there's some guide rails and, mm -hmm. you know, and they have a, a three to a five year game plan to go from the E to the S and then start touching on that B quadrant. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's, that's a real victory. Um, and considering we're at a time right now where a lot of business, a lot of people are displaced. Um, a lot of people don't want to go back to what they were doing. Um, now that they've had a taste of what it feels like to actually detach from the pressure of a job and so forth, uh, providing them with a vehicle like this. So then again, it comes back to the question, what are you, why would they join you? In this, in this context, having this conversation that re, re, we recognize we're moving people from E to S to B. Sometimes we're fortunate. Um, I got to tell you, the, the, what I did right when I launched my Nikken business is I went for S quadrant and B quadrant people. People. Mm -hmm. So when we came up with the list uh, for the million dollar list, entrepreneurial, influential, resourceful, those were the qualities that we would expect in somebody who is in the S quadrant or the B quadrant. It's not necessarily something like an, an employee is not entrepreneurial. Mm. So, but that doesn't mean they can't be. You just don't know until you, you give them a, a chance, you know? But if you want to shorten the growth curve, if you want to accelerate time frame on your business, you are a business recruiter. You are a business owner. Recruit talented people. That's what you should be doing. You should be looking for and recruiting like a headhunter talented people poach people who are very talented from something they hate doing and show them something they may love doing right so if you want to shorten the curve of your business find some s and b quadrant people and show them a better way hey that sounds like a great title for a business presentation a better way wait isn't that what we call ours yeah <laughs> Any uh, final comment? I've created a little uh, team within a team and we're, we're cross line. There are a lot of orphans in Nika and over the years I've, I've mentored a lot of people who are not in my downline. So now I have this team and we call ourselves Team Gryffindor because we're all magic, you know, <laughs> not moguls. And uh, the thing I think it's really magical about this group is we meet Monday to Friday every day at 8 a.m. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's a quick check-in. We say our mantra, we talk about things, and it's, it's, it's a place where people can come and say, oh, this happened to me, does anybody have any suggestions? So it's a bit of a you know, think tank. And then on Friday, we meet for an hour with, on Zoom, and um, it really gets to be very interesting because lots of things are created in that time. And I think it's important for that consistency, and I know Leo does that too. There are so many points within a week where people meet and connect and, and feel safe and know they can ask any question. They're not going to feel that it's a stupid question, right? So just wanted to throw that out because that's a powerful thing in my life right now is that team. So, well, that's a good point too about um, contact. You know, the, the rhythm of the business. This mm -hmm. is something that uh, Veronica brought up. She said that was one of the very first points that she brought up was the thing that she wanted in that she was lacking when she first uh, hit platinum in, in Nikan was structure. She felt that things in the way they were doing in Latin America was so, she, she compared it to ice cream, you know, chocolate and vanilla and raspberry and so forth. And she was lemon and, and she really had a hard time when, when people would, join her team, but they wanted chocolate and not lemon. And <laughs> so it was hard on her until she realized, you know, there's nothing wrong with lemon. They can have mm -hmm. the chocolate. I'm just going <laughs> to keep bringing lemon. Anyway, um, so the, the contact, the rhythm of the business, the idea of some regularity, some structure, that's the system. 
that can that help grow a team. A team has to congregate. It has mm -hmm. to meet. Mm -hmm. It has to interact for it to identify itself as a team. There's only one thing I caution when it comes to meetings on a regular basis. Is it growing? That's the question that needs to be addressed. Because if it's not growing, then it's a meeting for the sake of meeting a click and not necessarily a function. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll give an example of this. Back in the day when we did live meetings, wellness previews, um, a, a preview would start up. Somebody new on the, on the team, somebody want to really make a splash and we start doing previews. And then all of a sudden, hey, did you hear there's so-and-so is doing a preview? And then all of this entourage would start to show up of people coming over to this new wellness preview. And the wellness preview would explode in size because all of a sudden it goes from like 30 or 40 people to, you know, 100, 200 people. And the, the idea that the person who's hosting that meeting, they would think, what a success. You know, we were just a month ago, we were 30 people. Now look at us. And I would always take them aside and remind them. And I'd say, how many people in the audience were yours? Don't be confused by popularity, okay, with production. You wanna make certain that your team is growing, not that the preview is growing, but that your team is growing. The preview is not a reflection of that. It's a reflection of, you know, cross line and so forth. So, that, so always have your eye on what is a metric in your business. And, and I can speak firsthand to this because I was part of the creation of Team uh, Diamond. And we, you know, we went from people who were meeting by the hundreds to meeting by the thousands in, in about a year's time. And, and then it became a thing unto itself. And the, but the key metric for me was whether my group, group was growing. So what I would have is breakout meetings. Mm -hmm. Some of you were at my breakout meetings. I had a breakfast meeting, for instance, following the, the event, that was my way of saying, okay, we came together, we did all this, now let's isolate and now let's talk Turkey. Mm -hmm. And that gave us a chance to become a team, my team and so forth. And, and then as a diamond would emerge or, or a Royal Diamond would emerge on the team, then they would do their own breakout. So this is kind of the concept that's happening in Latin America. They have these these leadership groups and then somebody within the team starts to emerge and starts to sh you know start doing their thing and then next thing you know they've got their own meetings going on and their own identity and so forth and that's not discouraged that's encouraged because we want to grow leadership we want to help develop more leaders and in order to do that you've got to give space for somebody to be a leader you got to let them uh you know take on that role and not not sabotage that. So and yet instead encourage it. So keep always an eye on the metrics. Is it growing? Is your team growing? Is your business growing? Don't just look at the meeting. Is the meeting growing? Yes, we all enjoy being part of something big and something with some regularity gives us a sense of structure and belonging. But the thing that I think that matters most is, is it growing? So keep your eye on the prize. Make sure your business is growing. Guys, I think that's it for tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining. And um, I'm glad we got this talk conversation about team building on because I think it's such a huge thing to recognize the role that team building plays in helping somebody to migrate from the, the E, the S quadrant over to the B quadrant. The B quadrant is truly a team building exercise. It's where somebody starts to transition from being uh, the important person in the group to the person who recognizes the responsibility of growing leaders in the group, helping to have, to have that happen, create a space for that. And a system is the key to that, by the way. Even if the person decides to start their own system, um, what they're doing is they're saying that that's, the system is what's important. That's the key. Leverage the system, teach the system, duplicate the system, it's not the person, it's the system. Um, and that way the ego is tamed. And then of course, if the system isn't growing, if your team isn't growing, look at somebody else's system. 
<laughs> to borrow some. I don't think there's too many original thoughts in Nika and everybody steals from everybody and calls it their own, but it doesn't matter. It works. Keep it working. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks for Thank you. sharing your time. Bye.